Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you again for the fourth episode on the sons of God. We thank you for your mercies and your love. We thank you for bringing this to our knowledge at this time. I pray, O oh God, for the grace to communicate this word to all who name the name of the Lord. And to all who shall hear, let there be a blessing. Let them be drawn unto you to know you in your capacity as their father and they your sons. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We'll take on the fourth episode. In the last episode, we were dealing with the free will offerings. We said there were five different offerings and two were compulsory. Whether you liked it or not, if you wanted to have a relationship with the Lord God of Israel, you must deal with the matter of sin because our God is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. Our God is a holy God. There are angels in heaven crying daily, de holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. God said, I am holy, therefore be ye holy. Holiness is a strict business God expects his people to be involved with. He expects you to walk in holiness. He expects you to walk in purity, not in waywardness. Or not in hypocrisy of any kind. He expects you to walk in holiness. We want to today begin in this episode by dealing with the second category. And this is the category that is characteristic of the sons. Those who come into sonship are the ones who bring this level of offerings. The second level of Offerings is voluntary and they are free will. Turn to the book of Psalms chapter 110 verse 1 through 3 and listen attentively. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Take note of verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Take note. The word willing is a Hebrew word that literally means, it is nedaba, and it means spontaneous voluntary something that is given free will offering voluntary offering a voluntary or willing offering this, these are words that were used to describe this word here thy people shall be free will offerings in the day of thy power now, the remaining three offerings were known as free will offerings or the voluntary offerings. And they are as follows. Number one, the whole bond offerings. Number two, the meal offering. Number three, the peace offering. These three offerings were given to all who will if you want to bring these offerings. If you don't want to, God holds you to no account. But if you do bring this, and there are no special rewards attached to it. For instance, if you bring the sin offering, your sins are forgiven. It's a reward, as it were. If you sin and you commit your you, you commit a sin and you are at the mercy of a judgment, you confess your sins and bring your trespass offering, your sins will be remitted and forgiven. That is like a reward as it were. But, and you are made holy, you are declared holy, but the 
voluntary offerings have no direct reward attached to them. God doesn't say if you bring this, oh, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that, in this life or in the one to come. There were no direct promises made as to benefits you will have when you give these offerings. But we have discovered from the study of scriptures that if you bring these offerings, fine, God is happy. If you do not bring them, fine, God is happy. But if you do bring them, whenever God is embarking on anything that have eternal or anything that is of eternal value or repercussion, the Lord will remember. He draws from the pool of those who are bringing the free will offerings to him. This is why it is crucial that all who will be sons of God at these last days must be a people that bring the free will offerings unto the Lord, namely the whole burnt offering, the meal offering or food offering, and the peace offering. Let me start by, you know, uh, looking at that. This offering is the offering of sacrificial living. Let's turn to the Bible. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8. And I'm going to read it through verse 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall be put upon his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar and he shall put his garments put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean, a clean place and the fire Upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. Verse 13. The fire shall, nev shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Hmm. Now, this is the description of the law of the burnt offering. Let me just describe how it was done in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, if you wanted to offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, you are happy. The Lord has blessed you. You want, to, you want God to rejoice, to smell a sweet savor and rejoice. Now, you are not the consideration for this offering. It has nothing to do with you. You want to make God glad. You want to make him smell a good savor and rejoice. Oh, if I find out something that makes the almighty God happy, wouldn't I want to do it all the time to make him happy? I, as a person, like to make people happy. I like to see people rejoicing, laughing, enjoying themselves. And happy, and I derive a lot of satisfaction just seeing you happy by what I have done. How much more when you make the Almighty God happy? God said, When you burn these things, it comes, rises before Him for a sweet smelling savor. His heart is gladding, God is glad upon His throne. Beyond that, we don't know of any other benefit from it. What benefit it gives to the uh, offerer or even the priest that offered it, apart from the labor they all get into to offer it, God is the entire consideration in the whole burnt offering. And let us take note of that as the first character of a whole burnt offering. Anything we are going to give to God to make God happy, 
I don't think of something you give to a man to make a man happy. That 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 is not that is not the point. The happiness of man has nothing, no no bearing here. Has nothing to do with this. Something that you have given over to God, and God is glad. The savor, the sweet smell comes before the throne of God and God can rise and rejoice and be happy that my son so and so have given me something, some offering, a sacrifice to gladden my heart. That's the character of a, you know, a whole burnt offering. Now, the offering is the offering of sacrificial living. Is something that you offer to God. You offer it to him. To make him glad. To make him happy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should henceforth, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. This is the character of a person giving a whole burnt offering. You live for he who loved you and died for you on the cross. You don't live for yourself anymore. Amen. The second character of the whole, of the whole burnt offering is that the offerer does not live for himself. He is not in the equation. He does not consider anything to make himself glad anymore. It is only if it will make God glad. If it is going to make God happy, if it is going to make God glad, then he is going to offer it. Jesus Christ offered this every day. He said, I do always those things that please the Father. You can imagine that Jesus Christ speaking, that he does always, all the time, 100% of the time, always the things that pleases the Father. That is the life of somebody who is giving a whole burnt offering. Now, the whole burnt offering also speaks of death to self. Because to offer this offering, you must kill it. The offering, the sacrifice must die. It has to die on its own. And let me quickly first of all say, that Jesus Christ is our whole burnt offering. He fulfilled this for every one of us. To show us how to live for God and no longer for ourselves. Amen. He offered up himself. In fact, he took it to the, the, the very level of dying on the cross. He paid the price. He laid down his life willingly. It was not the Roman soldiers that killed him. It was not the Jewish uh, people that betrayed him. No. All those ones were just acting their role. If the Lord had said he does not want to die on the cross, he couldn't die, there was none of the things the high priests of the Jews or the Romans did that could have killed him. But he laid down his life. You remember when they came to arrest him? When they came to arrest him, the Bible says that um, you know, they took hold of uh, and not the disciples. They started arresting the disciples. And the Lord came and said, are you not looking for Jesus of Nazareth? He said, they said, yeah, he said, I am he. They all fell backwards and went to sleep. They were overwhelmed by the power of the almighty God. I keep saying every time I preach about this, that if I was in the crew, in the crew that went to arrest him, I would run away immediately. I would not arrest such a man. A man just simply said, I am the one you are looking for. And everybody is sleeping. And he has to wake all of us up. Common sense demands that you would not need to arrest such a man. But Jesus woke them up and said, If you say I am the one you are looking for, let these people go. I am the one you are looking for. I believe that he sucked in some part of the glory. You know, so that the people can be able to arrest him. Because he needed to die for the sins of the whole world. Your sin and my sin. He died. Death to self is one of the greatest character of a whole burnt offering. Death to the self-life. 
In John chapter 12, verse 24, this is what the Bible says. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall to the, into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That is the word of God. If it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Amen. Now you can see this. The Lord making it clear that a corn of wheat must fall to the ground, must fall to the ground and die. If it dies, it will abide. But if it does not die, it will not bring forth any fruit. Galatians chapter 2, at verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In Luke chapter 29, verse 23, And he said unto them, If a man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Amen. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall, my, shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he, call, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and in the glory of the angels. Amen. Now, take note of this. Death to self. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And it tells you what members to kill, to destroy. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness which is idolatry. For within sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walk some time when ye lived in them. Death to the self-life. Put anything that seems to exalt yourself down. Deal with it completely. Do not allow it to rise and trouble you. Again, offering up to God and living on his term alone. The whole burnt offering means you are offering up everything to God. They can call you a Jesus maniac. Don't worry. They can say you've gone nuts for Jesus. They can call you all kinds of names. But you know what you are doing. You've offered up everything to God. And you are living on God's terms alone. If you, you will not embark on something unless it is approved by God. If God is not in it, I am out of it. A person who is bringing a whole burnt offering lives this kind of life. Brokenness. This is talking about the destruction, dismantling of the ego. Pride. A broken person does not have, is not proud. Amen is, as it were, malleable in the hands of God. It's plied. God can tell him, do this. If it is for Christ's sake, he would do it. Just like Daniel of old. Remember him? The Bible said they found occasion against him. They sought occasion against him in every aspect of his life and living. They found none except in the matter of his God. And they went and made a decree that nobody should pray. They knew that Daniel could not toy with that. When it concerns his God, 
Forget it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were a people bringing a whole burnt offering to God. The king said, bow down or I'll kill you. They said to the king, we are not careful about this matter. We know that our God is able to deliver us. But if he chooses not to deliver us on this occasion, we still will not bow down because we know it is eternally wrong to bow down to an idol. And they never did. Such is the life of a person bringing a whole burnt offering to God. In this, this lifestyle, nothing else matters but the will of God. Galatians 2.20 I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is what is contained in living for God. Amen. Bringing a whole burnt offering. In this lifestyle, we deny the flesh and self. We prefer others to ourselves. We do things that are contrary to our own cravings. We may have cravings, but we refuse to give vent to those cravings. We refuse to give vent to them. We rather will do things that are contrary to those cravings. As long as they are in the will of God. The Bible said that the carnal man is against God. The natural man is against the will of God and they are permanently at enmity with each other, at loggerhead with each other. So who wins? God must win in my life at all times. Amen. We prefer others to ourselves. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 tells us, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Oh, this is an area where we really need the cross. The cross must be at work. The cross must be at work to bring to full death and dismantle and dis destroy this carnal nature that will not allow us to serve God. We come under an oath we come under a covenant to do things that are contrary to the human and the carnal nature. God is looking for such men at this hour. Second offering that is a voluntary offering was the meal offering. In Leviticus chapter 6 verse 14. And this is the law of the meat offering. The meat offering or the meal offering is the food offering. He said this is the law. You know, the sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, their God, before the altar. He will take of, his, of it his handful of the flour of the meal offering and of the oil thereof and all the frankincense which is upon the meal offering and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor, even the memorial of it unto the Lord our God. Amen. This is it. And you read on, it describes the meal offering full. This is the offering of friendship. That is the meal offering. In this offering, we are called to become friends of God. In Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8, he spoke about Abraham. He said, But thou Israel, at my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Now, it's important that we know this. God is calling a people to become his friend. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 7, 10 to 19, God was speaking. He was on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, shall I hide from my friend what I do? He would not hide it from Abraham. Now, friendship demands the following. Number one, there must be impute from both parties. It takes two to tango. You must play your role. You cannot expect God to just look for you all the time. You must look for him. God said, as a matter of fact, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Number two, there must be communication oiled by the Holy Ghost. 
You can see when he brought the meal, he said it should be mixed with oil and frankincense. Frankincense representing prayers, oil representing the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The flower itself, you know, speaking of the body of his word, we come in fellowship, in friendship with him to be friends of our God. Number three, no leaven. That is no hypocrisy, no malice, no wickedness. God said, I will not hide anything I'm doing from Abraham. And Isaiah tells us he was Abraham's friend. Hallelujah. Then number 14, you, that is characteristic of friendship, is loyalty. Friends are loyal one to another. A friend that is not loyal to you, that will disappoint you or turn to the other side at every opportunity, is not a genuine friend. Number five, total opening up to each other or truthfulness between friends. Friendship is tried and true. Always protecting or protective of one another's affairs. These are the things that characterize friendship. In this offering, we come before the Lord as his friends. We take care of his interests. We look out for him. We defend him. We are always on his side on every matter. Everybody sees us as friends of God. I remember people used to tell me, Is it only your God? Is he only your God? My God, my God, my God. Is he not my God too? I said, don't be jealous. I have to claim my own. He's my God. Amen. The last but not the least is the peace offering. This is the offering of fellowship. Our daily, frequent, one-to-God fellowship in praise and worship and thanksgiving. Making and paying of our vows to God. God, I will do this for you. And you go on ahead and fulfill what you promise God you will do for him. Being totally, being at peace with God and with others. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, As much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Be at peace with all men. So this is the peace offering. It's a fellowship offering. Where we fellowship with God at all times. Everybody that ever knew God and amounted to anything before God was one who worshipped God at all times. They stood before God. They stayed in the presence of God day and night. They were in constant fellowship with God. Sons of God are the ones who will bring this. Anybody of people who are bringing these voluntary offerings before God eventually grow into full sonship because there is Elements in each of these offerings that grows us, that matures us to the sons that God is looking for at this time of the end. May God bless you. We'll see you in the next episode. Amen.